Hi. In this video we are going to implement the paper auto-encoding variational bays in about 100 lines of code. The paper trains generative model on MNIST and FreyFace datasets. Let's focus on FreyFace. Link to download the dataset is in the paper. We will start by importing the required libraries. We will use PyTorch, NumPy, Matplotlib for plotting our results and SciPy to load our data. Frey face images are 28 by 20 pixels. After extraction from the .mat file, data are represented as a 560 by 1965 matrix where each column represents an image. We will reshape our data and use 80% of the dataset as training set and use an encoding where pixels values goes from 0 to 1. Then, we will create a function that returns a random mini batch from our training set. We will use torch.randperm to sample random indices and we will return training data from the sampled pointers. Now comes the interesting part, we will implement the encoder and decoder. The encoder is a neural network that takes an image X as input and outputs the hyperparameters of a multivariate normal Gaussian distribution. The decoder is also a neural network. The decoder takes a latent variable z as input and also outputs the hyperparameters of a multivariate normal Gaussian distribution. These hyperparameters allow to generate new images. As you can see, the encoder and decoder architectures are truly similar. They mainly differ by their input and output dimensions. Therefore, we will implement a generic class that models p of y given x as a multivariate Gaussian distribution where the hyperparameters are obtained from neural networks. Strictly following the paper, the neural networks have only one hidden layer. As image data are bounded by the application's dynamic range, for the decoder we will constrain the mean hyperparameter within the dynamic range 0, 1. The hidden layer H is a one-layer multilayer perceptron with a hyperbolic tangent activation function. Multilayer perceptrons will forward the output of the hidden layer to produce the distribution hyperparameters. Notice that we extract log sigma squared rather than sigma for numerical stability. When required, the mean can be constrained within 1 0 using a sigmoid function. Let's now create a helper function that outputs the mean and log sigma squared of the target distribution given x. Then, let us create a differentiable generative function to sample from p of y given x. Our helper function allows to retrieve the hyperparameters of the distribution. Then, given some noise and using the reparametrization trick, we can generate a new sample y. Now that we can sample from the distribution, let us create a function to evaluate its density. Once the hyperparameters are extracted, we only need to plug in the log density formula of normal Gaussian distributions. Last but not least, let's create a function to compute the KL divergence between the model distribution and an isotropic normal Gaussian distribution with unit variance. The KL can be directly computed from the hyperparameters from the model distribution, formula in the paper. We are almost done now. Let's create the core function to train and optimize the encoder and decoder. Beyond these two key pieces, the function takes as input an optimizer associated to each model, the number of epochs to train, the mini batch size m, the number of Monte Carlo samples l to approximate the loss and the latent dimension. During each epoch, we will sample a mini batch of size m and some noise of size m times l. Then, from the encoder, we will sample m times l latent z from p of z given x. Then, we will use the data x and z to compute the two main pieces of our loss the log likelihood that acts as a reconstruction term and the KL divergence that act as a regulariser. Once the loss is computed, we can use it to update the weights of the encoder and decoder by back propagation. Now, let's see how all these pieces fit together. We will use our model class to build the encoder and decoder with hidden layers of 200 units, as in the paper. We will constrain the mean of the decoder so that it outputs bounded data. We will use Adagrad optimizer. Different learning rates are mentioned in the paper, it is not clear which one was used with Freyface dataset. We will use 0 
No weight decay regularization is used for the decoder while a weight decay that corresponds to an isotropic normal Gaussian prior with unit variance on the encoder weights is used. To the best of my knowledge, this corresponds to a weight decay value of 0.5. Now, we can start our optimization in a single line of code. We will train for 1 million epochs so that 100 million samples will be seen during training as in the paper. Next, we will plot the value of our estimator of the log marginal likelihood during training. In other words, we will plot the opposite of the training loss. We will constrain the axes for a direct comparison with the figures from the paper. We will also add a title, axis labels and save the generated figure. Finally, we will reproduce figure 4a from the paper. As we used a 2D latent space, we can build a grid such that the value at zizj is the cumulative distribution function value p of zi, zj, fixing the grid size to 10 and the cumulative distribution function values from 0.01 to 0.9 to the power of 2 gives us different axis values for the latent space. We can then use these latent values to generate new images and plot the learned data manifold. Rather than sampling from the decoder, we will just generate and show the mean images that are deterministic and bounded. Nonetheless, sampling from the decoder also produces good-looking samples although the pixel values may need to be constrained between 0 and 1. If we have a look at the generated figures, we can see that they are close to the ones from the paper. Our estimator reaches the same value as in the paper although we seem to reach higher values more quickly. They may have used another learning rate or another training dataset size. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If this is the case, leaves a thumbs up and push the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you like the video format and which papers interests you for a next video.